Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Uh, welcome to today's webinar at Coach University. Today, we are uh, very happy to be hosting the Graduate School of Health Sciences um, for the spring 2021 and fall 2021 admissions period. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to have a couple of minutes to make sure that everyone who signed up is able to join. We had a very high level of interest in today's webinar. So we want to make sure that um, pretty much all of you can get a chance to join from the start. Um, my name is, uh, I will show you who we are. Uh, my name is Melissa Abache. I'm the Director for International Student Recruitment here at Coach University. And our other speaker today, we're very honored to have her here, is Professor Yasemin Gursoy Ozdemir, who is the Director of our Graduate School of Health Sciences at Coach University. We also have our colleagues, um, Ms. Eje and Ms. Imai from the Graduate School, who will be able to answer more detailed questions at the end of today's webinar about the, some of the topics that we are going to cover today. So whilst we wait for everyone to join, um, I want to give a quick overview of what we're going to cover today. Uh, we will have roughly 45 minutes and about 15 minutes. It can be extended a bit more for your questions. So we're gonna give you an, a brief overview of our university, especially for those of you who may be joining from outside of Turkey, in case this is the first time you hear about us. Um, we will talk about uh, rankings and you know, a specific membership of our Graduate School of Health Sciences, which we're very proud of as a new uh, graduate school here in Turkey. Then we will go into detail about what most of you I think are interested in, which is knowing more about our masters, with thesis, master, non-thesis or professional and PhD programs. That's what we're gonna be um, going into detail today. We will have a look also at the fantastic research, um, you know, infrastructure and opportunities that we offer graduate students through laboratories and research centers. And that's why I'm very happy to have Professor uh, Yasem in here today. Um, and we will have a look a bit about who is, who are our graduate students, um, in health sciences at Coach University in terms of domestic and international, where are our alum alumni? And then we will go into the more practical side of things to talk about the requirements to apply for admission to our master and PhD programs. We will give a quick update in terms of COVID-19 admission um, flexibility, let's say, and, and measures that we have taken to support both Turkish and international Ooh. applicants. Then we will talk about um, tuition, financial aids, and benefits for our uh, thesis masters, PhD, and non-thesis masters. And then we will do Q&A from participants. If you hear some strange sounds, I have to tell you that's my baby. I'm a new mom. He's uh, five months old now, so he doesn't like to be quiet most of the time. So I apologize in advance if you hear some baby sounds on the background, okay? So, um, this is one of my favorite parts whenever we um, talk to potential students for our university, it's showing our campus. We are immensely lucky to have the campus that we have, both our main campus, which is located as, as you may know in Istanbul, Turkey, on the European, that's my baby, <laughs> on the European side of the city in the Northwest. So we have a, a fully residential campus experience to offer to graduate students where we have uh, library, sports centers, uh, dormitories nearby, all the social and, and you know, uh, shopping facilities that you may need, a health center as well. Uh, so it is a fully kind of uh, fully serviced campus. Um, of course, this semester, uh, as in most universities worldwide, we've had to switch our uh, mode of teaching to online delivery, and that's what we're doing. So unfortunately, our campus feels very quiet nowadays. We only have um, researchers who are working in laboratories and, and uh, some very limited administrative offices are operating now. However, um, as a graduate student in the School of Health and the Graduate School of Health Sciences, you would be spending quite a bit of time in our other <coughs> campus location, what we call our health campus, which is the Coach University Hospital. Um, that hospital was inaugurated in, at the end of 2014. So it's now a six year old, uh, you know, full hospital. Um, and you can visit the website so you can see all of the different departments and facilities that it has for patient treatment. And also now that we have a lot of the research um, locations and laboratories in that hospital. So I, I invite you to, rather than me telling you about it, 
I invite you to um, have a look in the on the website. Okay, I'm gonna try to keep a a hold of. Thank you so so much for Farouk's thing uh, about becoming a new mom. So I'm on a practical note. Let me go back to my presentation. On a practical note for today, um, in terms of how to ask questions. I'm going to kindly ask you to use the Q&A feature that you will see there, uh, not the chat. Let's keep the chat for, for example, if we want to share with you a specific link, we'll do that. But if we can uh, all collaborate by writing our questions at the end of the webinar and on the Q&A um, section that you will see on your Zoom bar, that would be great. We would really appreciate it. So to give you a quick overview of Coach University, we were established uh, nearly 26 years ago, actually, to be a center of excellence that would provide world-class education and create new knowledge for the benefit of society. So from the start, we were set out um, as a, as a research-intensive university that, would all, that wouldn't only help Turkey, but also um, help to develop you know, uh, science in all types of disciplines worldwide. When you look at these numbers on the screen, uh, again, you can find this on our website, but what I particularly like about this is the fact that year on year, we have kept growing the number of master programs and especially PhD programs that we offer. As a research intensive university in Turkey, another uh, distinguishing factor is the fact that we offer all or nearly all of our programs um, at the graduate level in English, uh, with the exception of a, a couple of programs, and we will talk about some of them, um, all of our instruction is in English. So this allows both Turkish and international students to, um, you know, to study in, in the language of science, let's say, and become very competitive as researchers or as professionals in the health sciences, it, you know, in the current, uh, you know, uh, conditions that we have. Um, we, we are a small university. So when you look at our total student numbers, it's about 7,000 students. That's not gonna grow significantly more in the next uh, decade of, or so. We want to always keep our um, you know, faculty student ratio very low so that we can offer a very personalized education um, and attention to all our students, especially at the graduate level when it comes to supervision of PhD students and master with thesis students. Um, we have a lot of research centers and laboratories I'm not going to show you here the list of labs because it, you know, we're now at uh, nearly 300 uh, research labs, so it's a very long list, but you can find that on our website. What the outcome of all of that you know, research that is being done at, at our university, some ways of measuring the impact of that is that the fact that, for example, we're now the top recipient of national research awards in Turkey. Uh, for those of you who are joining us from Turkey, you may have heard of Tubitak. Uh, TUVA as well, and other, other scientific um, committees and organizations. Um, we also receive a lot of funding uh, from other, you know, from organizations uh, outside of the Turkish government, uh, from private organizations who are interested in doing applied uh, research with our professors, and then also sometimes funding, uh, you know, basic curiosity-driven research. So this is a very good position to be in as a university. We're also the highest recipient of ERC grants in Turkey. ERC stands for European Research Council grants. These are extremely competitive uh, grants that are um, available for any researcher in Europe, including Turkey. So here we are competing against you know, powerhouses of research such as Germany, the UK, Netherlands, France. Um, and in that sense, we have performed extremely well. So out of the um, nearly 20 ERC grants that are um, held in Turkey right now, Coach University now has over half of them. Um, we're also the highest ranking university in, Tur in Turkey in terms of papers published and also in terms of the citation impact of many of our researchers across different disciplines. And um, last but not least, which is also very important, is that we, from the beginning, we've always, always had very strong relations with industry. Um, that helps to inform, for example, the curriculum of our programs, the type of research that we're doing, the career opportunities that we're offering to our graduates, both at the undergraduate and the graduate level. So that's kind of who we are. Rankings is something that helps some students in their decision-making process. In that sense, we're also uh, have been chosen as uh, you know the first in Turkey at both the QS and uh, Times Higher Education rankings for the past two years. 
And in health sciences, again, being a, a quite new or young university in that sense, you know, the, the Graduate School of Health Sciences is actually our youngest graduate school. We have already reached, um, you know, a very good, let's say, position worldwide. And we hope that that will continue to improve in the next uh, five years or so. Um, talking about that, for example, Orpheus and, and Professor Yasemin can, um, you know, like talk in more detail about this. Um, we have joined a network of uh, universities that it's committed to developing and disseminating best practice within PhD training programs. This is very important because um, the PhD experience can vary greatly between universities and even be within a university between uh, different graduate schools. So uh, we, we are an institutional member of that network um, and we, um, our goal is to receive the Orpheus label. So that, that gives you an idea of the quality of uh, research environment, academic output uh, supervision that you will be receiving as a graduate student, especially if you're applying for a PhD program in a graduate school of health sciences. So um, I will now, before I ask Professor Yasemin to join us, I would like to um, do a very quick Paul, for those of you who have joined us today, just to know a little bit more about you, because it's going to also help us, um, you know, tailor a bit the, the content or where we put a bit more emphasis if we, if we know which programs you're interested in. So I'm going to launch the poll right now. There's three questions and I will give about one minute to answer. So if you can kindly answer those three questions. First, we would like to know if you are currently located in Turkey or outside of Turkey. Um, if uh, you can tell us which of the programs that we're offering in uh, the Graduate School of Health Sciences you're mostly interested in. And um, if you would like to know details, uh, you know, what aspect of uh, those programs you're more interested to know more about. This is also going to help us uh, if later on you want to receive more information via email, we can send you more specific information on those topics. So I see a lot of you are now voting. We are about uh, nearly 40% of you have voted. Thank you so much for those of you who are, you know, you know why you're here and you're marking your decisions quickly, thank you. So I'm gonna give you five more seconds. If, if there are some of you listening from your mobiles, it, you know, and you might not be able to be voting as easily. That's okay. Just a couple more seconds. Okay, we're nearly there. Nearly everyone has voted. Okay, so I'm going to end it now. Okay. And share the results so that you can see them. Okay, so we can see that um, most of you, nearly 60% are joining us from outside of Turkey. So thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate it. We know we might be in different time zones. So um, I hope it's not too late or too early for you from where you're joining. And yeah, 40% of you are in Turkey, which is great. Um, in terms of which programs are we mostly interested in, we can see clearly there's a lot of interest in our cellular and molecular medicine program. So I will kindly ask Professor Yasemin to, you know, maybe go into a bit more detail about that program. That's one of our, you know, best programs in, in I, I think in terms of research uh, that's being done there. So it's great to see uh, you guys are interested in that. We also see there's five of you who want to know more about our immunology program. Um, and then uh, we, have, we have a couple of people interested in public health. Uh, in microbiology, physiology, reproductive biology. Okay, so, but uh, we can see a clear kind of interest in cellular and molecular medicine, I would say neuroscience and immunology. And then, um, yes, most of you would like to know, of course, you know, that's the first thing you want to know about pro program tuition and scholarship. We will talk about that. Don't worry, just a bit, a bit patient because it's coming, you know, uh, after we talk about the, the programs and also program admission requirements. So yes, we will definitely talk about that and research opportunities. So I'm happy to see that we are pretty much covering all of your, that's the baby, <laughs> the, all of your key areas of interest. 
curriculum and faculty members. Not many of you are interested in that, but that's fine because you can see all of that details on the Graduate School of Health Sciences uh, website. So I'm gonna stop sharing results now, close the poll. Okay, and go back to our presentation. Thank you for bearing with me in the meantime. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to ask Professor Yasemin to uh, join us now to open her microphone. Uh, and I would like to give her a warm welcome and thank you again so much for joining us today. Thank you, Melissa, for uh, this nice introduction. I think we lost the PowerPoint. Okay, so also I want to thank uh, all of you for attending this uh, information ses session. And uh, I, I want, you can see our programs here uh, and we have both master programs and the PhD programs. Master programs, uh, in some of them we have the non-thesis option as well as thesis option. Uh, for neuroscience, cellular molecular medicine, we have only thesis program in the master's degree. And for immunology, we have both thesis and non-thesis program. We have reproductive biology, nursing, molecular biology, and genetics program, but uh, we just uh, do these two programs uh, jointly with the uh, science faculty and the nursing faculty. We have biomedical sciences and engineering program, master's degree, and we are also performing this program with the uh, both uh, engineering faculty, science faculty, and the uh, medical faculty. And we have critical care nursing program, uh, which will uh, try to recruit uh, students, uh, especially this semester. We have medical physiology and medical microbiology programs, master's degree. And we are applying to the uh, Higher Education Council for the medical microbiology PhD program. Actually, it's on the process, uh, not opened yet. And uh, we have the public health or the uh, global health program. Actually, it is uh, accepted and uh, we just uh, started the program uh, just in like two weeks ago. And uh, But we will uh, recruit the students uh, from fall 2021 not this uh, spring semester. Uh, for the PhD programs, we have neuroscience, cellular and molecular medicine, immunology, reproductive medicine, nursing, molecular biology and genetics, and as well as biomedical sciences and engineering programs. And um, if you, you just uh, want to know uh, a little about the cellular and molecular medicine master and PhD programs, actually it is a, uh, umbrella program for the medical sciences. So uh, it includes uh, all the areas of the medical studies like the cancer research, uh, gastroenterology and the uh, allergy and the other uh, kinds of pathology uh, of the medical uh, sciences. So it is, I mean, in this program, you will just take some required lectures, but other than that, you will tailor your education with your advisor according to your needs and your area of expertise. So uh, if you want to study in an area of the medicine at the Koch University with a, an advisor, uh, then you can be involved in the cellular and molecular medicine program. Uh, for the immunology, it is a newly established program. We just started last semester, uh, thesis, non-thesis, and PhD program. Now we have recruited around like 15 or uh, 12 to 15 students uh, in the program. And uh, we will see how it will evolve. But uh, we have uh, here um, uh, our university and the hospital uh, got a uh, grant from the uh, European uh, Commission as an immunology chair uh, program uh, in uh, Tyrex. It is called, uh, the short name is the Tyrex. So we will uh, get a, a good immunologist, uh, very well known all over the abroad, uh, to the immunology department and actually uh, 
the uh, interviews and the applications are going on. And I am sure that uh, it will be a really very uh, big and good program uh, in the future. Uh, since we are uh, establishing this uh, Tyrex translational uh, transplant immunology program, uh, which will be um, a very uh, important uh, grant and a very important project for the European Union also. And also for the uh, medical bi microbiology and the infectious disease, we are opening a, a new PhD program. Uh, we applied to the Higher Education Council. Uh, also, our uh, microbiology and infectious disease department got a, a very good grant from the uh, one of the uh, big banks of the Turkey, uh, Ishbankası. Uh, so they are establishing an infectious disease and the microbiology research uh, facility. And uh, this will also uh, improve our research abilities in the microbiology and infectious diseases. We can continue, Melissa. And uh, as I said, uh, we are establishing new laboratories, but we have a lot of uh, very uh, well-designed cutting edge technology included laboratories. Uh, like we have the microbiology laboratory, which includes the BCL3 uh, that allows to studies with the viruses, for example, with the coronavirus uh, in Turkey. And it is uh, really uh, one of the several laboratories uh, that's present in Turkey. We have genomic and proteomics laboratories located inside the Kuttam facility. I will uh, show you how is the Kuttam. It is a, a multidisciplinary research facility. We have stem cell and gene transplant laboratory. We have neurophysiology laboratories. We have uh, EEG, ERP research laboratories, as well as we have EEG and EMG laboratories at the hospital. And we have a very well established cutting edge technology microscopy laboratory. Uh, and it's actually two parts. One part is located at the main hospital, Koç University Hospital, and one part located at the uh, main campus, Rumeli Ferreira campus of the Koç University. And um, in this microscopy laboratory, we have the uh, multi-photon uh, microscopy, uh, laser scanning microscopy, and we have the uh, very new technology laser dissection microscopy and the other confocals and fluorescent microscopy. So um, it's really very well uh, established design. And I can say it is uh, the uh, one of the top microscopy laboratories in the Turkey, as well as maybe in the uh, uh, East Europe, I mean, uh, because no one have this much uh, cutting edge new microscopes on their facilities together. Uh, so we are proud of this microscopy laboratory. We have anatomy laboratory. We have multidisciplinary uh, uh, laboratories located in the uh, medical faculty and the Kuttam. And uh, I just want to show some pictures about the Kuttam and the uh, numbers we can pass. Kuttam uh, is the short name of Koch University Translational Medicine Research Center. Uh, it is uh, actually uh, established for the development of high value added biomedical devices based on the basic scientific research and local opportunities. And it just supports the advanced scientific studies in biomedical sciences. And also one of the uh, aims of this Kuttam uh, Research Center is maximize the cooperation between universities and industries, as well as in the university, the medical faculty and the engineering faculty and the science faculty. So it's a kind of multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary research area. Uh, that's why it is really very helpful and a very good opportunity, especially for our master and PhD students, because all of them are performing their research uh, in this Kuttam Laboratories, and Kuttam Laboratories also is located uh, in uh, both campuses, and uh, there is uh, one big, uh, several uh, level uh, facility located in the uh, 
uh, hospital, uh, like I can say that uh, motion analysis and cognition laboratory, neurodegeneration research laboratory, and uh, as well as um, molecule, uh, microbiology laboratory and the uh, 600 square meters uh, big uh, multi-purpose research laboratory on the hospital, but also uh, there are other laboratories like the molecular medicine and cellular molecular imaging, omics laboratory, animal research facility, biomechanics and endurance laboratory, nanoscale prototype laboratory located at the uh, main campus of the Koch University. So these are the numbers that uh, you can see that actually they are not uh, updated this uh, end of this year. We want to update these numbers, but we have a lot of academic members from both uh, medical faculty, engineering faculty and the science faculty. And also we have uh, master and PhD students working at the Kuttam laboratories, as well as we have postdoc researchers and we have national and international uh, projects ongoing uh, using this facility. We can pass Melissa. And maybe you just wonder uh, how uh, many students we have. Actually, <coughs> sorry, we have 71 master students and uh, 129 PhD students. <coughs> sorry. Um, and we are recruiting the international students as well as Turkish students. And as you can see from uh, spring semester to now, we increased the number of the international students from nine to 16. And we have also increased the number of the other uh, admissions and the recruitment. And uh, maybe you wonder what are uh, our graduate students uh, are doing. Actually, they are uh, finding very good postdoctoral or the PhD positions in the very well known uh, European and the American universities, as well as some of them are uh, working with us as a postdoctoral researchers. And uh, we have a lot of good connections and the good facilities abroad also to provide the postdoctoral and the PhD studies. Okay, thank you, Melissa. May I continue or do you want to continue? Um, if you want, uh, I can take this part and also our colleagues, uh, Ejen Simai, can jump in if I miss any details, okay? So uh, from the poll, we know that many of you are interested to know about our admission requirements uh, to, to apply and to be admitted to one of our master um, and PhD program. So here is the summary. You can also find all of this in the Graduate School of Health Sciences website. So what I want to take a bit of time today is to explain um, the, the, the importance of each of these elements, right? So um, I highlighted, sorry, I highlighted the statement of purpose. That's a very important part of your application because it's where you're going to explain um, why you want to pursue a master's or a PhD program at Koch University at your graduate school and in that specific field. Um, and ideally you would outline some of the research questions, topics, uh, experience that you've had either in your, <laughs> he wants to participate too, in your um, undergraduate degree or in your master's degree. Um, for example, if you've had a look at our professors in the program that you're interested in and you identify that they're working or have recently worked in some topics, you can, um, for example, state that you want to, that you, you wish that you could be supervised by, for example, that faculty member. It's not um, as in other universities in Europe, for example, especially I know many of you might have been checking options in the Netherlands or in Germany, where you need to have um, a sort of formal approval from a supervisor to apply to a program. It doesn't work like that. Our system for um, application and admission, it's more similar to a US uh, master's and PhD admission system. So the important part is that you have your transcripts from all of the university degrees that you have attended and completed. Um, there are some minimum GPA, grade point average, uh, that we look for in candidates. It's not a, a hard rule, but it does, uh, you know, increase your admission chances, of course, if you have not just 
the minimum, but above the minimum. And you can see there what is the minimum on a scale of four for, okay, for a PhD and for a master's degree. Um, we also look for recommendation letters. So what you put in the application form is the contact details, the name. Okay, I think, I think I'm being interrupted more by, by my baby. Anyways, so for recommendation letters, you should um, provide three referee contact details for PhD and two for master programs. Then English proficiency is of course um, an important part because the programs are offered in English. So you should demonstrate that you will be able to cope with the courses um, of the program. And then later on the, the written sort of work that you will have to do at a PhD or master's level. So in that sense, we ask for TOEFL um, internet-based test with a minimum score of 80. Uh, we, all can, we can also accept Pearson test of English, Cambridge uh, CAE and you can find the details on the website. IELTS, uh, it's not eligible in Turkey for enrollment purposes. However, if you have taken IELTS recently, so in the last two years, and you have a score above 6.5, you can include that in your application. But if you're offered admission, you will still be asked by the graduate school. And this is um, our colleagues here. That's, that's important to why they're here. Um, you will still need to provide a TOEFL um, IBT score above the minimum. If you are a Turkish applicant, you can take TOEFL or you can take the local uh, English proficiency exam uh, called YDC or Yokdil, and the minimum score is also 80. Then um, for PhD programs, uh, especially, it's very important that if possible, you provide um, a GRE test score with a minimum of 156 in the quantitative section. So the GRE, again, it's quite common for admissions to um, health science and basic science programs in the US and we follow a very similar um, system, right? Um, the, the main point here is that there's not a single thing that will determine if you are um, admitted or rejected to a specific program. It's a holistic admissions process and evaluation process. So the faculty members, for example, in cellular and molecular medicine, they will take a look at all of the elements of your application um, but there are some, of course, as I mentioned, the statement of purpose, your GPA, the university, whoop, the university you graduated from, that are going to, of course, uh, play a heavier, uh, you know, uh, role in their evaluation of candidates. Um, all the application process is done online, so you do not, uh, you shouldn't email documents to the university or send any paper copies of documents to the university. Uh, we have a, a new application system that works quite well in terms of being easy to use and easy to understand for candidates. So uh, you can see the address there. It's apply.ku.edu.tr. Um, and you, uh, you, know, you put all the details that are requested there and upload the documents that are requested. Um, in terms of deadlines, we have um, today we're talking about um, admissions for our spring 2021 semester. So that's a semester that would start in February 2021. The applications are now open. So if you wish, you can go today and start your application in our application system. And the last day to apply is the 13th of December of this year. So make sure that, you know, if you have all of your documents ready, we invite you to apply. If not, if you're not ready yet, um, you need more time or your, you know, your current uh, studies or your career uh, situation doesn't allow you to, but you're thinking about starting in September next year. That's our fall admission period. Um, the applications typically open around the end of February, March, oops, sorry, <laughs> and close in July. You will see the exact dates on the Graduate School of Health Sciences website uh, early next year. Last from Oops. Okay, <laughs> last for me is uh, COVID, of course, still is affecting several uh, aspects of our lives as, as potential, you know, applicants, and we know that we receive many emails from uh, all over the world uh, with the same issue. So we know that there's countries where they're still, okay, <laughs> still not able to take um, the GRE or TOEFL test score because the, the test centers are still closed. In Turkey, if you're in Turkey, you are actually, um, you know, the situation may have changed very recently because of new curfews that were, you know, announced last week. But you are able to take the um, the GRE and the TOEFL online at home test, 
um, and you can indicate the date of the test in the in our application form and you will still be evaluated on the basis of all the other application documents. Uh, so make sure that all of those other documents are well prepared that you took the time to check them um, if you're going to ask for recommendations from uh, professors that have supervised you or people who have managed you make sure that they know that they're going to be contacted by the university and that they need to prepare a good recommendation for you um, in those cases where you don't have a currently you know valid uh, GRE or TOEFL test score the graduate school uh, professors you know the evaluation committee they will uh, consider if they can give you a conditional admission. That conditional admission just means that by the time you come to enroll either in February for the spring admission or in September, October for the fall admission, by that time, then you need to provide all of the missing documents. Uh, mainly, again, GRE and TOEFL, which we know are the key uh, trouble kind of areas right now. Some of you may also have problems obtaining transcripts, official final transcripts or graduation transcripts from, from your university. We know in some countries it takes quite a bit of time to obtain these documents. So again, the any kind of temporary but official document that you can obtain from your university uh, is okay in terms of application, okay? In terms of submitting your application. Um, here, we're gonna talk uh, about, again, uh, what most of you are interested in today, which is our tuition fees and scholarships. So if we start with scholarships, uh, one thing that Coach University is very proud of is that uh, not only the amount of PhD students across you know, all the graduate schools that we are hosting nowadays, but the fact that we support those PhD students to make sure that they're able to produce the best they can with the supervision of our excellent professors. So the scholarship process at Coach University is fairly simple uh, compared to most um, American and European universities. The process is that you apply to the program, for example, cellular and molecular medicine to the PhD program, let's say. Um, if you are shortlisted, they will contact you to have an interview. That interview, uh, you know, like it's, it's usually arranged by the professor, one of the professors in the program. Um, and then if you are successful in that interview, they will then inform the graduate school team to offer you admission to the program. With that offer of admission, you will see the offer of scholarship or the scholarship details. So for PhD student, um, we offer 100% tuition waiver or exemption on tuition fees. Uh, and, and there are some exceptions for some programs that we will talk about. Um, a monthly stipend. That monthly stipend at present, again, it may change for next year, but it's currently 3,000 Turkish lira per month. And it increases to 3,500 Turkish lira after the PhD qualifier exam. This is an exam that it's taken after you have completed all of your um, required like, core and elective courses in the PhD program. Um, we may also share either free um, shared housing near our campus or a monthly housing aid amount. It's not meant to cover you know, all of your uh, housing expenses, uh, but it will certainly help. It might not be enough though, for example, if you're planning on coming with family members like a spouse and children. So in that situation, we advise you to seek um, additional funding either from your government, from family, from loans, uh, any other sources that you can find. Uh, also private health insurance with limited coverage for the scholar who is going to be um, at Coach University. A meal card um, with a you know, prepaid amount that can be used inside and outside of campus. If you're if you have a card, then you know like uh, you know a, a sticker so that you can park the car at the university, and uh, most important, more importantly, travel support to attend scientific events. Of course, right now we're in a in a world where we're not thinking when can we when we'll be able to travel to scientific conferences again. It's uncertain, um, but uh, you know once that is possible, then there is a, a budget for that at the graduate school to support our students to present their work. At, the, at prestigious and well-recognized scientific conferences. That's with regards to PhD students. For master with thesis students, or masters with thesis are usually you know, two years in, in which the second year you're you know, uh, working as a teaching assistant and as a research assistant and writing your thesis. So for those students, we also offer 100% tuition waiver or, or exemption uh, for the duration of the program. There may be then a monthly stipend housing aid 
health insurance and travel support according to the funding. So this is according to which professor you will be working with or uh, and which project they're able to fund you with. In some cases, uh, we may allocate funding from the central university budget to support some master with these students, but this is the minority, okay? Um, we also have some students, for example, that after they have the interview with the faculty member of the program, the faculty member decides that they want to fund that student, sorry, um, through the grant uh, or the, you know, the money that they have received from a specific project that it's either funded by the Turkish government or by another organization, either in Turkey or outside of Turkey. So in that sense, you still have 100% oops, sorry, <laughs> tuition waiver and uh, the stipend that you receive as a salary to cover your living expenses it's going to vary. It's usually, oh, okay. I'm, I'm Maybe going to I can continue, yes. Yes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so it's like a hundred percent tuition waiver uh, is possible because uh, the faculty member uh, will provide you with Um, I think Professor Yasemin, can, Professor Yasemin, can you hear us? Okay, I think we might have a technical issue here right now. So we're going to try to continue. I do apologize for the background noise, okay? Um, so can, can you okay, now? Uh, okay, I can see now. Okay, and uh, uh, free uh, housing opportunity is possible again. The screen, huh? okay. Uh -huh. uh, housing actually, uh, uh, now uh, we are not providing the house, but instead of a uh, kind of uh, housing aid or the um. um uh, housing with like two uh, or three person together in a uh, near place to the university camps or the hospital. And we provide private health insurance as well as meal card. If you will use your car, we provide free uh, fast transit pass, car stickers for the campus entrance. And uh, this is just for the PhD students. And also, as Melissa said, that we provide travel support to attend scientific events, uh, but now it is impossible uh, to provide this since there will be uh, no possibility for the scientific events, travel for the scientific events. And also, we uh, actually ask our uh, students uh, to provide some, uh, I mean, to get uh, apply to the uh, scholarships, especially we ask Turkish students to apply to the TÜBİTAK BİDE. Uh, TÜBİTAK provides monthly stipends for these uh, students and then we add some money on top of it as a, a research award from the Koç University and uh, we, ex we expect all uh, full scholarship students apply to the TÜBİTAK BİDEP graduate scholarship program uh, as uh, they are accepted to our programs. For, this is for the Turkish students. For the international students, maybe Melissa, you can tell. Yeah, uh, the yeah I will share my screen again. Okay, so um, the Turkish government started uh, quite a number of years ago, a scholarship program called Turkey Scholarships or Turkey Scholarships. There is a specific one for doctoral programs. Um, so we invite all of you who are joining us from outside of Turkey to check that website that you can see in red at the bottom, turkeybursole.gov.tr. Uh, the reason is that uh, we have a specific agreement with, with this organization, like this Turkish government organization. So if you apply to, for example, cellular molecular uh, medicine program and you're offered admission, um, we will also nominate you to be funded by Turkey Bursare, but you do need to create uh, a profile and all and you know include all of your documents like diplomas, transcripts, uh, passport details, etc. 
in their online application portal in order for the scholarship to be um, valid or activated. What that scholarship will provide, um, so 100% tuition waiver exemption, that's, that's let's say the part or the contribution of Coach University. But then the other elements such as a monthly stipend, uh, visa support if you need a visa to enter Turkey, flight from your country to come to Turkey, you know, once we have, you know, face-to-face -face, uh, teaching again, hopefully. Um, and housing support, either you know, in the Coach University uh, facilities or in private accommodation, then uh, that's why we encourage all of you to to basically create your profiles on turkeyebursare.gov.tr and in parallel to apply to our doctoral programs. Okay. Um, in terms of the non-thesis master, so so far we have mostly focused. Yeah, okay, <laughs> on our on our thesis masters, but we do have a very uh, you know a growing number of students who are interested in not taking, for example, two two years or four years of their lives to devote to this because they have a clear kind of uh, industry focus in terms of their career development, whether that's to work in in pharmaceutical companies, in technology companies, in. Uh, you know, like biomedical, um, bio device companies, there's a whole range of industries where you can work. And they wish to only take, for example, one year in which they will take courses related to, uh, let's say immunology, neuroscience or cellular molecular medicine, but not write a thesis. So these programs, what they offer is a compressed um, kind of amount of time to learn all of this with a final project at the end. The tuition fee for those programs is $15,000. Uh, um, and there are scholarships. They are limited, but you know they, they are available. And they are awarded according to the success of the candidate. That decision is made by the science committee of the Graduate School of Health Sciences once they have evaluated all candidates. And uh, there is no hard rule or black and white rule of if you have this GPA or if you have this GRE score or uh, anything else like that. They will take into account your whole profile as a candidate in terms of your uh, grades, recommendation letter, your, in, you know, your career objectives, uh, and of course, any financial uh, need reasons that you may explain in your application to make that decision. So the programs for which we um, require you know, students to pay a tuition is our master's in immunology, PhD in immunology, neuroscience, uh, cellular and molecular medicine, and PhD in cellular and molecular medicine. And as Professor Yasemin mentioned, from September 2021, once we open or once we start welcoming students, also for our master's in public health. So if that's uh, what you're interested in to do a shorter program, um, please you know, be confident that this is an investment that we'll, you will see the return on this fairly quickly. Uh, given that these are all programs that are highly, or these are degrees and skill sets that are highly sought after in uh, the private sector. So, you know, we, we're confident that this is a good investment of your resources. Okay. Uh, Melissa, may yeah. I add something to this? Uh, yeah. Actually, our uh, thesis, master, and PhD programs are also accept, ac accepting tuition paying students. Uh, because some of our students, uh, they continue their work or they don't want to uh, get full-time involvement in our program. In that case, we just ask for the tuitions. And uh, so they have the opportunity to take the lectures uh, online. I mean, uh, all uh, for the COVID period, we are doing everything in online, but after that also, uh, we will uh, provide all the lectures as online recorded, I mean, in the classroom, the lecture will go on and either you can uh, attend the lecture uh, synchronously or uh, you can just watch the lecture recordings after uh, that time, I mean, at night you may want to watch the lectures and for uh, the um, examinations you may come uh, to campus and uh, get the examinations and also maybe according to the program it may change uh, you can uh, just come uh, for example uh, each semester like uh, one week or 10 days to come to the campus and uh, do some practical works and uh, other time you can just follow uh, the lectures 
Uh, but for especially uh, neuroscience, immunology, I mean, the thesis neuroscience and the immunology master programs, uh, you have to perform your thesis. So it will uh, depend on your uh, collaboration or the work with your advisor. So you can do your thesis if it is like the uh, analysis on the computer remotely, but uh, for the lab work, you have to uh, come to uh, the hospital laboratories or the uh, campus laboratories in order to perform your um, uh, thesis. And uh, so we have flexibility. I just want to mention uh, to that option. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Yasemin. Yeah, that's uh, very timely to, to add that. So we do have that flexibility in terms of the, the format that you take the programs. Um, last couple of slides, and then we'll uh, have enough time for our questions, is if you are still an undergraduate student at university, for example, if you're in your uh, second or even third year of your undergraduate program, we have a summer research program, so it's a chance to come and, uh, you know, if perhaps next summer it will still be online, we're not sure, hopefully not, but it's a chance to do a research internship with professors of our, you know, uh, different departments and, and faculties at Coach University. You can see the website there. Uh, please have a look. There is a, this is a free program, and it's a great opportunity to to basically see if you if you would enjoy being a student here, if you think you will be a good fit, um, and if you would like actually living in Istanbul. If you are coming from outside of Turkey, this program is open for both Turkish and international um, students. In terms of uh, where can you find more help to prepare your application, if you decide after. Uh, you know, checking that you want to apply. Well, for international candidates, we have specific guidance on international.ku.edu.tr. But of course, your first point of uh, call, let's say, should be the Graduate School of Health Sciences website, which you can see there. It's gshs.ku.edu.tr. It's available both in Turkish and in English. So that's all from us. We are leaving here our email address. And if you're using Instagram, I encourage you to follow the Graduate School of Health Sciences on Instagram because you will see a lot of announcements about the program application dates. You will see profiles of their students, of their alumni, uh, their professors, the research center. So it's a nice way to get to know more about who we are as a community, let's say, of uh, graduate students and researchers. So that's all from us. I'm going to now close my microphone and I will invite my colleagues um, Eje and Simai to open their microphones to help us uh, navigate through your questions. So if you have um, questions that were not covered so far in our presentation, um, as I said at the beginning, please uh, type those questions in the Q&A box that you see on the on the right hand side and we will go through them i think some of them might have already been answered but uh please uh we have about yep yeah, i think a, a bit more than 10 minutes i think we can extend it a bit more to answer your questions hello everyone it's aj speaking uh, i am an uh, administrative assistant at graduate school of health sciences and uh, Simai and I will be ready uh, for answering your question. And uh, we have just one or two uh, unreplied questions in here. Uh, I'm going to read uh, one of them. Uh, am I able to apply for the Turkey scholarship even if I am an international student who is living in Turkey? I have checked in their website and it seems that I'm not up. Uh, I am not eligible for this scholarship because I'm living in Turkey. Uh, Misa uh, yeah, he's correct. Unfortunately, the Turkish scholarship is only you're eligible if you're applying, if your current place of residence is outside of Turkey. Any country on earth, it's eligible, but you shouldn't be living in Turkey at the moment, OK? OK, uh, the other questions. Um, I'm a dentist and graduated outside of Turkey. Do I need to evaluate my DMD degree before applying? Uh, DMD degree means like uh, dentist medical, uh, something like that. I don't know. Yasin Hocam, do you know that? DMD. Uh, I think uh, it is the, uh, the uh, she or he is trying to get the 
Turkish equivalent of this degree from the Higher Education Council. But actually, uh, we don't need the equivalent degree. I mean, if uh, she or he has a uh, degree uh, and if he or she can prove that uh, graduated from that uh, university, actually, we don't uh, check it is dentistry or medicine or the other branches. So he, uh, he or she can apply to our programs. Thank you. Uh, this is Simai. Another question is, I would like to ask again, now I am a graduate from biomedical science, having certified as a medical laboratory scientist from ASCP, having a medical research published in a great medical journal. And my problem is that my GPA is 2.62. Can I apply for master's degree in immunology? Is there a chance? Uh, unfortunately, you cannot apply because your GPA needs to be minimum at least uh, 2.7, uh, so you cannot apply. But I think for the non-thesis, uh, there is an opportunity to apply, apply as uh, I, I can remember. Uh, uh, actually, my... William, uh, he or she asked about biomedical science. Uh, biomedical sciences, uh, the joint program with uh, GSSC. Uh, is there immunology as well? No, I'm sorry. Okay, I saw now. Are you asking for immunology non thesis or with thesis? Okay. Please, I want to know if I need to secure a supervisor before PhD application. Uh, you don't necessarily need to, but uh, it would be better if you can contact with a supervisor prior to your application, it will increase your chances. Okay. Are the TOEFL and GRE required as a prerequisite even for someone who has obtained all his education in English? Yes, they are required. Uh, Selamlar, I am Dr. Tahrim, working as resistant neurosurgery in Pakistan. I want to apply for neuroscience programs given the limitations of my training here. GRE and TOEFL are needed for me at a point. My university results in the uh, percentage not GPA. Uh, if you want to uh, neuroscience PhD or master program. Uh, actually, if you want a neuroscience PhD program, your GPA must be at least three. Uh, if you want a master in neuroscience program, you uh, your GPA must be at least uh, 2.70. Uh, on the other hand, uh, GRE and TOEFL exams are required for the uh, applications. But if you have any exams, you can apply without exams. Uh, of course, you can have a chance uh, with conditional acceptance. Um, sorry, can I um, just add to this question? If your university transcripts are not expressed in a GPA of 4.0, that's not the scale used, but for example, uh, a percent like out of 100, for example, um, that's okay. On the online application, you write, you select which scale you were uh, evaluated in, for example, out of 100, and you, you know, you write the scale, that, you know, the percentage that you received, and then uh, you know, there is, then they recalculate it and do the equivalency towards uh, a system of four. Online, you can also find kind of equivalency tables between a 100% system or scale and a 4.0 4, uh, GPA scale. Okay, thank you, Mixa. Another question, I am an internal medicine resident practicing in Istanbul. I believe I would greatly benefit from the non-thesis immunology or physiology programs. Do you think I would be able to receive scholarship or be able to remotely complete the program in the case that I applied? Yasemin Hocam, would you like to answer this question? Uh, could you again repeat? I just missed, I tried to find the uh, chat, but I couldn't find it. Okay, could she asked again. I am an internal medicine resident practicing in Istanbul. I believe I would greatly benefit from the non-thesis 
immunology or physiology programs, do you think I would be able to receive scholarship or be able to remotely complete the program in the case that I applied? Uh, yes, it is possible. I mean, uh, non-thesis immunology, we don't have the non-thesis physiology program. Actually, that's why you cannot attend remotely or uh, without full time to the physiology program, but you can attend uh, remotely to our immunology uh, non-thesis program. Actually, it is a paid program. And uh, I mean, we may offer uh, uh, scholarship from the tuition. I mean, instead of 100%, you may pay like 75 or 50%. And that depends uh, on your uh, application, uh, your qualifications, and the program director's decision. So you can take the immunology non thesis class remotely and not full time. Uh, coming to the campus or the university. Uh, thank you, Ojan. Uh, the other question. Also, I want to know I can proceed for application because I have not defended my master due to COVID-19 issues. I have completed all the theoretical aspects on the remaining defense. Uh, all the candidates uh, who has not been done uh, their master or PhD uh, thesis defense, um, but you have to uh, upload your transcript that you uh, have at the moment. And if you accept it, uh, you can only enroll with a diploma or temporary uh, graduation certificates. Okay, I am from Pakistan. I have done Bachelor of Science in Human Nutrition and Dietetics. In which PhD programs I can apply? How many programs I can apply at a time? And if public health I choose, what would be this stipend given? Uh, actually, you can apply all the PhD programs, I think. And there is no restriction or limitation for the number of the PhD programs that you can apply. Uh, and if you choose public health, Actually, the stipends amount will be decided by the program coordinators. You can receive 100% or non-scholarship. Yeah, actually this program is again uh, with thesis and non-thesis. And if you are applying to non-thesis, you have to pay the, uh, the program fee. And if you apply for the thesis, then you are uh, subjected to get the stipends according to your application quality and your uh, CV and according to the program coordinator's decision, but you may not get uh, this, uh, I mean, uh, scholarship. Uh, it depends on the applications. Okay, thank you. The other question, uh, do we need to apply for Turkey bursları before the deadline 13 December? And for PhD, coach have two scholarships, one coach university scholarship and two two cables. Sorry, am I right? Please, guy. Uh, actually. Yeah, I'll, I'll reply to that. So uh, okay. no, you don't need to apply for Turkey Bursa before 13th of December because the Turkish scholarships uh, application period is different. They open their applications usually in January and close them at the end of February. It's a short window of, uh, uh, let's say, applications. Okay, so just keep an eye on the website. The main thing is that if you are offered admission to Koç University and your offer letter states that you have been selected as a Turkiye Bursa, a Turkish scholarships um, recipient, you need to make sure that by then, whether that's, for example, in, uh, let's say, May, June or July, um, that you would have created a profile on their system and you have uploaded the documents that they request in there, okay? That's the main thing, to make sure that you have a user created on their system and that you have uploaded the diploma, the transcripts, passport, um, and answer the, the kind of contact detail questions that, that they ask there, okay? Um, and I think uh, if there are two types, uh, yes. So basically the types means who is funding the student. So uh, some students will be funded by the central university budget we call that the, the coach university, let's say PhD scholarships, and other students will be funded by Turkish scholarships, but they first need to get admission to the program by applying in our online application system, okay? 
the amount of the stipends also varies and you can see the details on the on the website as well and you can see it on our international admissions website too thank you melissa uh, the other question is i don't have uh, sat and toefl if you do them online are they valid uh, because of covid uh, sat exam is not required for the application or uh, master and phd programs but the home edition exams are not uh, taken to consideration uh, according to higher education council uh, rules and regulations Mm, however, you can apply without exams and you have a chance to get uh, conditional acceptance, as we uh, said before. Uh, and you are given time like one semester uh, for you can submit your exams that has taken uh, from test centers. Okay, another question is, with master's in biochemistry, do I have a chance for being accepted in, into the PhD program in cellular and molecular medicine? Uh, I think, yes, you can apply to our programs and our coordinators will evaluate your background. And if you found eligible, then you can be accepted. Okay, the other question. Uh, what should I mention in my application so professor approves me for a scholarship? Uh, what should you do? Uh, actually, uh, there are I some... I can answer this question, oh, Actually, uh, your application, I mean, the motivation letter is important and your reference rate letters are important. Uh, but also, we are doing an interview uh, with the applicants. Uh, actually, our professors just choose according to CV and motivation letter. And then during the interview, actually, uh, with the committee, we decide who can get the scholarship, who cannot. Actually, we have a limited number of the scholarships available. Uh, that's why we have to choose the best uh, applicants. Thank you, Eja. Thank you, Ojan. Uh, the other question is... Smile, please. Yes, uh, my highest qualification is MS degree in cellular and molecular biology, but I still have not been graduated. When can I apply for PhD in cellular and molecular medicine? If you are in your last semester and you are expected to graduate within our application dates before the next semester uh, begins, then you can apply. Okay, uh, the other question. Last time when I applied for your program, I was missing two references. Professor sent them too late. I was wondering, did I got refused because of that or the overall application was not enough? Um, it can be the uh, one and only reason uh, you has been rejected. I mean, just um, your references. Uh, this is the de decision made uh, by our admission committee. They evaluate each student carefully and um, make this decision uh, very carefully, you can be sure. I mean, this is about your whole uh, application and uh, your application documents, I think. Uh, Yasin Ujjan, do you want to add something? Yes, you, that's correct, Ece. Uh, that's a good answer. I mean, we are just looking as overall, not just the reference letters. Uh, I mean, if you have one ref reference letter, that may that's enough. Uh, we are just uh, looking at the CVs, motivation letter, as I said, and then after that, we decide to call for an interview or not. So we are doing this with the uh, with a committee. So uh, a lot of uh, our professors uh, look all of the applicants, and then they decide to call or not. Thank you, Hojam. Is coach approved student from other university to do research with the supervisor from coach and also use the lab for master students? Uh, I don't think so, but Yasem Nojan, would you like yes, to Yes, actually, uh, this is not for the admission, I uh, assume. Yeah. Uh, this is for just uh, studying at our research facilities. Actually, if you are <clears throat> doing your research with uh, collaboration with the, our faculty members, uh, you can just uh, come and do your research at our facilities. There are a lot of examples of this. We are open. Actually, Kutam is a government 
established center. That's why it's open to all the universities, the, all the studies in Turkey. Uh, thank you, John. The other question. Uh, I don't have TOEFL, neither I am registered for it. So can I apply? And if I get admission, I will definitely take TOEFL, okay. Uh, you just need to write an estimated date of when you can take uh, these exam uh, in the future. You must specify a date around of the 2021 August of the latest before uh, you can submit your application. Uh, your application will be evaluated and it's possible uh, you, you can receive conditional ex acceptance. Okay. okay, another question is, it's, can we work in Turkey during Master of Philosophy or after that? Yes, you can, uh, both during your education and after that, you can work in Turkey, yes. Uh, is there a partial scholarship? Yes, there is partial scholarship, especially uh, if you are uh, working uh, somewhere else, I mean, uh, different institution, uh, you, can, can, you can get exception uh, part-time students. Uh, yes, it's possible. Uh, yeah, actually we are doing like that in uh, that condition. It's like we accept uh, part-time applicants to the uh, uh, tuition fee programs. And we just do scholarship option from the tuition. Okay. It is not like we are uh, providing the full-time students. Uh, for the full-time students, we uh, waive the tuition 100%. We gave them stipend and the other things. But for these part-time students, we just uh, apply the scholarship from the tuition amount, okay? Thank you, Hocam. I got a Turkish scholarship to pursue a PhD in biomedical engineering at Kocaeli University. However, I would like to pursue a PhD at a graduate school at Koç University. Is there a transfer to Koç University possible? Uh, I don't think that uh, your scholarship can be transferred, but maybe Melissa can answer this question. Uh, yes, that's correct. Unfortunately, uh, you cannot transfer your current Turkish scholarships to another university. You would need to um, you would need to apply to our PhD program. If you're accepted, then the graduate school, you know, they may decide if they fund you from again central budget or from Turkish scholarships. If it's from Turkish scholarships, uh, we would request approval from Turkish scholarships for a, a, a new scholarship for you. But you would need to. Um, let's say, renounce or, or finish your scholarship at the other university, at Kojaeli University, okay? Unfortunately, it's not possible to transfer scholarships. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Uh, I would like to apply to an immunology master, and I am graduated from uh, biomedical science, certificated as a medical laboratory science uh, from AC, ASCP. And I have a publication about HEY in a great journal. My only problem is that my GPA is 2.62. So is there a chance for me to get it? Actually, we have talked about that. Uh, if you are planning to apply immunology non-thesis program, okay, go ahead. Uh, it will be evaluated. But uh, if you are planning to apply to uh, with thesis program, uh, the minimum GPA uh, must be 2.70. Okay, I have graduated this year on Bachelor of Science Biotechnology and Laboratory Sciences with GPA of 3.2. Will I be eligible for scholarship or admission for master's program? Uh, yes, your GPA seems eligible, but your background, your CV will be evaluated by the coordinators and your acceptance status will be decided by them. Uh, okay, the other question. Sometimes we need to admission letter as condition for scholarship application in my country. Is it possible to obtain the admission from KU in order to process the scholarship in my country? 
Uh, I can I can answer that if you want, um, AJ. We do have other programs and, and students from countries where they are applying for their national scholarship, um, and it is possible. What I would suggest is that in your statement of purpose or motivation letter, uh, you can indicate uh, that you are going to apply for you know the name of the scholarship program you're going to be applying to in your country. Um, and yes, you know, if you're offered admission, the offer letter may state that, you know, this is a tuition waiver, but we're not covering, for example, a stipend or other benefits. And you can use that admission letter to uh, apply for your national scholarship uh, program. Okay. If you have more specific questions, we, we do work with different government organizations and scholarship bodies outside of Turkey. If you have other questions, you can write to us to um, study at ku.edu.tr. I'm going to write that email address in the chat box now, uh, just in case I'm writing it now. Uh, so yeah, if you have questions about a specific, I mean, in your country, uh, if we have a specific agreement with uh, an organization in your country, you can check with us, okay? Uh, There's one more question. Yeah, I'm going to read. I applied for a PhD at graduate school and invited for interviews at Koch University. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't receive any scholarship from Koch University. Uh, if I apply again, will my application be considered? And this is anonymous. <laughs> Hocam, uh, should I... Um... Actually, it, it depends <laughs> on the program. I mean... If uh, also the applicant's quality at that time, uh, um, uh, for example, one program says that I will get just two Koch University scholarship uh, students from this uh, semester, these applicants, then we just uh, list them uh, according to their uh, evaluations from one to, for example, 10. And then uh, offer goes just first two students as a scholarship uh, acceptance. And uh, for example, if you apply now, maybe uh, it may change. Uh, so try again. I recommend trying it again. Thank you, John. That was the last question. Yeah, I think uh, we're also, uh, we have extended the webinar time, but I think there have been very interesting questions. We just have one more question. I said, is novel and original proposal have chance to get scholarship because I have a very strong proposal and I expect very good results. So um, I think going back to what we were mentioning, the statement of purpose uh, is a very important part of the application package that you will present. So the more details, um, not, not, I'm not talking about writing 10 pages because it's not a research proposal what is expected, but you can outline the, the research that you have in mind um, you can mention, you know, what you have done so far, uh, who has supervised you, what, you know, skills you have developed or uh, learned and any results you have so far. Uh, and I'm sure that will kind of uh, pick the interest of the faculty members because then they can see that you, you have a clear kind of uh, uh, interest. And, and the most important thing is that the research that you're proposing should be aligned with the overall themes or topics that are being done by the professors in that program uh, so that they are able to supervise. So otherwise, you might have a very good proposal, but if no, no faculty member is working on that topic, unfortunately, they will say that they, they have to reject you because they cannot supervise you, okay? So um, with that, um, there is, a, I think we should be wrapping up now. I want to thank you so much, all of you, for coming today and uh, listening to us with a baby included who is now acting up. <laughs> uh, but as uh, my colleagues in the Graduate School of Health Sciences said, please do feel free to uh, get in touch via email. Uh, we have written our email addresses in the chat uh, feature, and you can, of course, find them in our websites as well. So the the yes, the, there's a message here from uh, one participant. Kiss your baby. I wish I want to do that all day, but yeah, <laughs> we can sometimes. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, we look forward to welcoming your applications for our spring and for our fall admissions period. Um, and with that, we're going to close today. So a, a final goodbye from our panelists from the Yasemin Hoja. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for attending. And if you have any questions we are ready to answer all the time uh, don't worry just 
call us or send an email. We will be happy to answer them. Okay. One final thing, and thank you for the person who asked for the slides. Today's webinar is recorded. We're going to upload the, the webinar recording to our YouTube channel. And because you have registered for the webinar, you will get an email, um, I think two days later, with the link to our YouTube channel, and you can watch it there anytime, okay? And with the slides as well. So thank you so much, and we're going to close now. Everyone have a very good week, and please stay you know, uh, healthy. Uh, uh, and safe during these times. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. We hope to see you again. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.